morning at 5 o'clock na misa wake up, prepare my things, go to market. Misa go to kan, pago lo every morning. Things me face him na sometimes me garem uta had time o sem fo go go lo market, time o sem weda o si him me no bu. Every morning, Joy Frank paddles her dugout canoe for 30 minutes across the lagoon to the town of Aoki to get to the market. There she sells smoked fish and some produce. Helen Philemon has a number of small farms where she grows vegetables and raises dairy cows. Twice a month, she packs up her produce and joins other women in a public transport to make the three and a half hour trek to Luganville Market in Vanuatu. I wake up at about five, do all the cooking and everything ready, send my daughter to school, and I just go into my farm, do a little big work on the farm, and then I just go off to market to start off my daily routine, my market business. Helen, Joy, and Shabna are only three of the thousands of Pacific women who rely on selling their produce in markets for their livelihoods. If you look at markets in our region, between 75% and 90% of market vendors are women. These can be professional market vendors that are there every single day of the week, but also rural women who have their vegetable gardens in the village, in the community, and come to the markets over the weekend to sell their produce that they haven't been using for themselves or their families. And often that's the only source of income that they have. For many women, they are not able to save any money from their market sales. The majority of market vendors in the Pacific are women. Their earnings go towards their children's education, household expenses, food, healthcare, and other necessities. But working as a market vendor is hard work involving long hours in tough conditions. Women's work in the market is often in addition to their other household duties, such as cleaning, cooking, farming, children, and family care work. The women also face a number of challenges and hardships every day in the markets, just to sell their produce. For many years, this has been the only life many of these women have known, until now. Recognizing the importance of markets in the lives of Pacific women, the United Nations Entity for Gender Equality and the Empowerment of Women, known as UN Women, established a project in 2014 called Markets for Change, or M4C. Supported by the Australian Government, the Government of Canada and in partnership with UNDP, the Markets for Change project addresses four key outcome areas to improve the lives of market vendors in the Pacific. Strengthening market vendor associations, which represent women's interest in the marketplace, improving socio-economic security for market vendors, ensuring local governments are more gender responsive and accountable to women vendor needs, improving infrastructure and on-site services, including ensuring markets are safe and disaster resilient. Although women were you know, the vast majority of vendors, they very rarely had a say in how the markets were managed. We thought it was a strategic area where we could target a number of issues from economic empowerment to women's leadership and agencies to discrimination and violence against women in one place, while at the same time contributing to the economic growth and developments of the countries of the Pacific. One of the initial challenges was gaining the trust of local government administrators who are responsible for managing markets. We work closely with municipal and provincial councils in Fiji, Solomon Islands and Vanuatu and we focus on including women with disabilities and women from rural areas to ensure that they benefit equally. The Markets for Change project works to unite local governments in addressing some of the many barriers facing women in various Pacific Island markets. More than just improving conditions in the markets, the project is about empowering women market vendors in leadership positions. It helps women work together at the market level, which in turn helps give them a collective voice so that the market management better understands their needs while ensuring the efficient and effective running of the markets. In this way, women market vendors have a say in the running and improvement of markets while at the same time giving them opportunities to improve their livelihoods for themselves and their families. As women, I can say we can run the house, we can run the business with great success. Woo! 
I was just pushed to be a market vendor because circumstances arise in that manner when my father passed away. Shagna Verma has worked as a market vendor for 27 years. With two small children at home, she had no choice but to help earn money for her family. And then coming in the market, it was not easy. There were a lot of competition, jealousy, fighting. The person selling the same item as you would even not look at you. Shobna tried to bring her concerns to the market administrators, but often they were not interested. Our words were never heard, and we were not even allowed to talk to the market master. They could say anything they want to us. In Solomon Island markets, the situation was similar. Time we fall arrive go, ota ve das na ota save run for ota market blo mi far. And mi fall no garam chance for go, and mi fall garam space for put him, and mi fall put him prices. No anything him organize. Me just concentrate on me sell ever no ma and market blo me and all that with every other vendors or same too. In Vanuatu, Helen Philemon found that the expensive fees for selling in the market made it difficult to bring home any money. Then we call a market. Me market the money finish no more. The table with them flow. After me call a toilet, me pay a toilet because me want to see me must pay a bill block or see me patron because me no pay me pay me no seco pay me stop. Market vendors shared similar challenges throughout the Pacific, but felt powerless to change the situation. The UN Women Market for Change project helped change that. If we are to empower women. We need to understand where they're coming from, what their challenges are, and, and those uh, could be personal questions. But from the personal questions, let's devise strategies that can help them. To truly empower the women market vendors, they had to become part of decision making. This led to the development and strengthening of market vendor associations in all of the markets assisted by the project. These associations have organized market vendors, providing them with a collective voice to raise their concerns and to work more productively with market management. Control now recognizing that me fall now right hand blame inside the market. Anything will happen in the market, control always stop the association for deal with them issue before come look at that. A lot of the issues that they have, they come in individually for us to address, and it's quite difficult. But with the Market Vendors Association, whatever their needs and problems, they can bring it to us. It's like they are the, the link between the people, the, the vendors, and, and the government. The Market Vendors elected their own representatives to attend these associations. But like many new vendor association office holders, Eslin was afraid that she might not be up to the task of representing more than 2,000 market vendors who sold produce at her market. So mi save brought lo project we have in farm all woman lo save stand up for them all vendors inside lo market house ya only come out lo one one area block at house them all good good for la woman lead the mama lead inside lo one one farm. Since that me for the woman me for collectively come together as association and me for garden voice for talk up. I got to recognize him now that there is an organized women's group inside the market. And so, me, me have a goal of management, me have a talk freely with him. Part of being a representative of fellow market vendors was questioning where the money went from the fees vendors are charged. Me have involved inside the budget consultation. Yeah? First time ever, me have looking what na budget the market. Oto look save lo mi fala and mi fala look save lo oketa and oto questions concerning market fees and all this we mi fala ko question him before him cleared na bis mi fala part with him oketa lo budget consultation mi fala look him na how selling lo fala him ko. 
organize events, I receive complaints, I negotiate on behalf of the vendors. I try to empower my community to tell them that we need to, to work on this particular goal that we have to reach and bring about change in the market. Working with associations, local governments responsible for the running of the market can now more easily consult and include market vendors on discussions for inclusive budgets, planning for infrastructural improvements and handling vendor disputes. Through working with them, we have an understanding that they act as a conveyor belt in between the vendors and the municipal councils. They, they become a sort of a, an agency which is able to very much promote dialogue, promote the, the discussion of challenges, assist in municipal councils via participatory structure to understand what all is required, assist uh, municipal councils in the establishment of operational plans for the purpose of meeting the challenges. When I see women, I see myself, I see my mom, I see my grandmother who started from the market, I see my daughters, my sisters. I want to improve what they, what they have now. I would like to improve that in a way of negotiation and talk to relevant authorities on how to improve their lives. Before the association was initiated, when women vendors experience personal safety issues such as theft, sexual harassment, bullying and discrimination, they did not know how to raise these issues. One achievement of the market vendor associations was to better organize the vendors to prevent overcrowding and make transportation more efficient. In the Luganville market in Vanuatu, for example, Women from certain geographic areas were assigned days to attend the market, allowing them to compete with fewer vendors and to have more time at home with their families. So inside the Fofala group, everyone in Ostave come together from 3,000 members and big one to match. So we must separate them by group for group. So all is have come by groups, all is have make small money blow or that ID blow it this market vendors association was trained. They were also given all the tools, they were given the skills, they were provided with the knowledge. After that, the relationship between the council and market vendors improved drastically. Through the market vendor associations, the concerns of women market vendors are now being heard and discussed. The associations play a key role in resolving conflicts, as well as finding consensus on issues that affect vendors, both men and women, as well as market management. I've seen a great change in the market around Fiji as I grew up in the market. So I know the in and out of the market in Fiji. Eh? Now I've seen a change, you know, and I'm quite happy that I'm, I'm part of it. Before the Market for Change project, opportunities for training market vendors was very limited. They also faced a range of barriers to saving money. This situation affected their ability to help support their family, improve their standard of living, and to save for their future. At the time, we the market to put We spend them plant the money to save the table more every something inside the market. We look say, time we come back, we we carry small money. No, we come back. Before, I used to use my cash anything, like anything, just buy anything, see anything, you just buy like that. Before time in market, I uh, uh, just for the training. I yeah. know save no more how now for me uh, saving uh, money where I uh, look him lo every day. I uh, spend all about no more. Through the Markets for Change project, women market vendors were offered various training courses to improve the way they ran their market business. Through UN Women and its partner UNDP, a range of training courses were provided in financial literacy, business skills, financial management, customer service, record keeping and saving money. Training was also provided on subjects like food handling, health and hygiene, good governance, communications and conflict resolution, 
agricultural improvement, disaster preparedness and gender dynamics. The market um, is an opportunity um, for women to learn new things, new ideas. Um, this is around, you know, how crops are being planted, the new types of uh, seeds, um, how they water. So it is uh, an important place. Before me for doing gardening, me was a bonem, me was a bonem, me was clean up, me was bonem or the sticky or the grass. From training, me was a bonem, no the grass. I was me clean him no more, then me leave him him rotted. Him make me feel that me feel garden some for the comfort, but me look him no, I was me him give him or the healthy fruits. Through the project partnership with UNDP. One of the key training topics was on simple bookkeeping, teaching the women how to record their sales and expenses to ensure that they earn more than they spent. The training also taught them how to save. We were taught how to do savings, how to use your cash, and keeping my records and other things. In all three countries involved in the Markets for Change project, both private and national banks assisted UN Women and UNDP by providing training for the women in financial literacy and other subjects, free of charge. We actually covered the um, life cycles of an individual and then we talk about their financial goals because it's important that they have a financial goal and then to achieve the financial goal uh, as we believe that women need to be financial literate to make uh, informed decision and we want at the end of the day we would like women to be financial independent. This was a training for helping me and so that a lot of things I have learned inside now a lot of training I have changed I have budget and I have put now some for money and I have put them keep him or some still in for I help him family blow me I have put them aside then we come back I have tell him now lo kita some for the market vendors. The training also opened the women's eyes to possibilities outside the market. I attended my agricultural training and I learned to plant something. I came back and decided to say, but I made one business for me. Then I decided to make money of chips. The training also helped the women understand the importance of saving to help them manage unforeseen and unexpected expenses, such as being too sick to work so they could still meet their expenses. Fish business here, I me make me help me for a big one, you know, all profits plonge, me could put them in saving. You know, I'm supposed to one man, one lo me for a, me got one big for a sick, he need to go to the hospital, pay finance, you know, that time here, me for a, go take employees, I will help out lo all the time we finance me no more cut and I me help me for a too lo like school fee, lo picking me, I me all grandchildren for me, all me help me for a lo all places here. UN Women worked with its key partner UNDP to also provide training on personal presentation, produce display improved agricultural productivity and adding value to their produce so they can sell it for more. All of these trainings aim to improve the marketability of the produce the women sell. Time we go attend them a workshop blowing me of food safety and hygiene care. Me learn them stakaya. Same last time me no sa foil them out fish. Me sa put them dry no more same. Then a place me sa work them out same. You work them kakai me no sa work them good too. I am a no more than motu or same. But time I go attend him now, workshop where low food safety and hygiene came with this lenim staka for make him or same, make him market him a little bit. Change for me. We were also given trainings on how about going, uh, treating your customers. I'm very happy that Market for Change is really meant Market for Change. It's really changing, market upgrading, and our life is also upgrading with them. They're very good entrepreneurs. They know exactly what they want to do, what they want to get. But to have the dis discipline around financial management, having a proper record keeping, having a market strategy, having a business plan, that's something they need to be reminded that it's important. 
Training was also provided for market vendors on how to be more resilient to disasters and other effects of climate change. Booklets were prepared to help market vendors and local officials prepare for and recover quickly from cyclones, flooding and other effects of climate change. The market vendor associations became a conduit for providing training that not only empowered market vendors to improve the way they ran their businesses, but also to participate in policy discussions. But the Vendors Association of Vietnam is an ice for people's time. Women's division have got um, consultations or have got um, trainings for women and invite them to um, the Vendors Association for attending. At the same time, this year we have got a women's policy. Vendors Association has me part inside law that for policy. Say Bloketa has been included inside law policy. Yeah. So, me for a lot of vendors, me for start to realize him that him association him training me for for look savvy. Me for no woman nati, or say me for a woman where got a name or title or as him Solomon, you me say you me got a number. You me look savvy lo who na you me you me more important than before. Markets for Change seeks to put women front and center in planning and decision making processes, and it supports women to become leaders, business entrepreneurs and advocates in their communities. Improving their knowledge and understanding of improved agricultural techniques, basic finance and how to better run their small businesses has empowered many of the market vendors. It is helping to break the cycle of poverty many have lived in their entire lives. percentages of market vendors in the Pacific are women. Despite this, market managers previously gave very little consideration to the special needs of women vendors. To address the situation, the project convened meetings and training courses with local government officials, sensitizing them to view the administration and management of markets through a gender lens. Before attending the meeting, my thinking was that we have to be equal, like men and female. Give them two toilets for male, give two toilets for female. When you actually go to the depth, then you see the demand is not like that. Male, we just have 20% male, and female, we have 80% female. And if it's a busy period, all the women's their line. In addition, the outside customers are there. Women are standing on the line to attend the toilets. One way to ensure that women's needs in the markets are addressed is to focus on gender-responsive budgeting and planning. The project worked closely with local administrators to ensure that any new policies and projects address the concerns put forward by the market vendor associations. Once women vendors realized that their voices were actually being heard through the market vendor associations, their concerns about a number of issues in some of the markets were pushed to the forefront. One of the most urgent issues for the women was security. Since I want my association and my phone card still inside, the municipal is not thinking about me, not thinking about the same day one security can stop watch over me all night. All man, all stop watch, all steal him money, all steal him because all mama lo market. Be koko naya since last year, all it just stop realize him now. We look naya now. Same same municipal or the association to fly. Same time too, only help too, lo talam lo council when I need it to yumi makem, especially in terms of maintenance, all our security issues, we exist lo all market. Women in the Solomon Islands Vendor Association also helped identify issues that were important to them. Me fala uh, stay inside the marketplace, then me fala look look what not some fala things where. Uh, Control or providing for vendors. Finding funding to address issues that the women identified proved difficult. Some vendor associations, though, found their own way to help their members with money issues. I one for objective association, yeah, garem a retail shop. Me for garem in mind that inside the retail shop, yeah, but me for start them a saving scheme. Other women, other garem place for for come put them selling blo oketa. Other got an opportunity for investing land, block it for him grow. Also, we can borrow money from me for that too. 
uh, where me for call them lending scheme, where anyone him like him uh, capital money for start your market blame him save kamlo me fala. One fala na a lending scheme where me for save give him out one thousand dollars. Lo security blo blo red money. Traditional shell money in the Solomon Islands has great value locally and can sometimes be used as collateral. After two months or same time, I pay back I return him red money block it, and I continue with the market. So for him, one and a half years now, since operation has started, and I get into savings. Some vendor associations also identify the need for better on-site services in areas of waste disposal and hygiene. Key challenges for market uh, waste management and one for a big key challenge for market. Like for example, currently market no got them any dump site. So even the public complain about them waste. I think through vendors association, if Oketa looking na inside the market, if there is a need hem liars together with the market management, then we follow doing na waste uh, management campaign. After Market for Change came in and organized the group, they have realized their responsibility and duty as market vendors, that they are not working on their own, they are not working against us, but they, they are there to support us. So I see the Market Vendors Association as a big step forward for us. Market vendor associations help address some of the barriers that women vendors face. The market vendors work closely with market management to ensure issues such as security, sanitation, hygiene and other issues get prioritised. We have noticed changes. We have noticed the sense of ownership growing amongst uh, the, the vendors. Uh, the networking building exercise uh, going to another level. Uh, the sharing of knowledge uh, and, and the operational capacities and their experience in between vendors, council to council, uh, going to another level. Through market vendor associations, women were now able to participate in plans for improving their markets. Infrastructure issues that vendors highlighted included having access to clean washrooms, running water, good lighting and ventilation, as well as security. You and Women supported a number of markets by providing upgraded infrastructure, including water tanks, temporary market shelters, and market tables in several locations. But even though the issues and even the solutions were identified, small town councils often lack the ability to make the structural changes necessary. Whereas council can provide with skilled labors, but on the other side, we don't have the, uh, those technical uh, resources to meet the requirements that uh, M, uh, Market for Change is emphasizing upon. This was again an area where Markets for Change helped. The project assisted local governments with partial funding and helped identify the necessary technical expertise. And so we work with local government authorities on a cost-sharing basis to support improvements in uh, the market infrastructure. This can go from building new sanitation facilities to ensuring that women have accommodation centers where they can sleep safely during the night, especially those women that come from the rural areas for the weekends. Many market vendors travel long distances to the markets from their homes. Many of these trips are expensive, often requiring the women to sell all their produce just to be able to afford the trip back home. For many women, traveling to the market means that they must spend several nights in the market. In Fiji, the project worked with the government of Fiji to build women's accommodation centers for rural women, a practice the project hopes to extend to Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. With the help of the UN Women and of course a partnership with our government, we managed to do a accommodation block for these women. So it was all based on consultations and decisions were made in consultation with these market vendors. Other issues that we've discussed in terms of uh, market vendors, particularly women, is the need for um, childcare facilities and, and how they cope with bringing their family into the market environment because um, a lot of them can't leave their children at home and they bring them with them. 
Before the Markets for Change project, few of the markets within the project offered accommodation for the women. The women had to sleep overnight under the benches of the market stalls. So time we project and Mr. Witemi Fala, Hemi make him say Hemi help him. All mama vendors from Mivala is a all, all mama we only come all the way from Big B. All get her only service to pin set market house. One week extra. All people we only come to West Coast. We only travel far away. Only come only service to extra two weeks. From but if we got enough money, blow them bike transport plane. Maybe if we go bike home. But staying overnight in unsecured markets presents special concerns for women who are more vulnerable to gender-based violence. In markets where there are no accommodation centers, women and their children are exposed to random outside people, drunkards and others who might try to steal from them or commit violence. With them for C, we have made uh, progress so far so good in realizing that accommodation is an important uh, aspect of uh, ensuring that this, the needs of the women are addressed. And it's not just women fenders, it's, it's, it's both male and female and children. Plans to build accommodation facilities began at many of the markets under the project. At Singatoka Market, a new accommodation centre now offers women who travel in from the rural areas a place to sleep during the days they are selling. The Government of Australia provided financial support through UN Women to build five women's accommodation centres in Fiji, plus furnishings for an additional two centres. There are plans to expand this number of centres as well as address the need for accommodation centres in other project countries. Despite constraints in both financing and expertise, infrastructure projects in all three countries are in progress. Some are nearing completion while others are just beginning. From us, we have a accommodation centre, we have a place where they can meet, they can discuss uh, whenever they, uh, they want to have a meeting, we have a space for them. So this is, uh, this is a good thing for the market vendors and uh, the council as well. Vanuatu's markets had other infrastructural concerns, which the project helped address. Even trainate, well, mama is sleeping, people are in, what I run through the trainate, look at the rat, all cockroaches, all come out. Even I full up, me all mama is not sleeping, more or more. They are only, all mama is complaining now. So for one, we start two years finish, but no cut change. Plan to start, we have already identified the drainages and we have already identified those causes. Those improvements on the plans will greatly help the market to improve its current infrastructures. If we take them on board, think them local, say, this is what all you want them, then how now we may accommodate them all better. One area where all three of the Markets for Change project countries are vulnerable is natural disasters. Whether it is tropical cyclones, earthquakes, tsunamis or torrential rains, these disasters pose a unique challenge for marketplaces. In February 2016, the largest Category 5 cyclone ever to make landfall, Cyclone Winston, devastated parts of Fiji, including the Raki Raki market. Uh, after that, we did a risk reduction exercise uh, within the council itself. Uh, and one of the important factors that we noted was the infrastructure. So the new market that we are building now is Category 5 compliance. So we had to involve engineers and have that all compliance to that level. Through the project partners, the Government of Australia and UN Women provided funding to entirely rebuild Raki Raki market, enabling market vendors once again to earn money for their families. In March 2015, Vanuatu's markets were also devastated by a Category 5 cyclone, Cyclone Pam. New markets now being built are all Category 5 compliant. The time Cyclone Pam is coming to the market, so now we are playing no more Category 1 market, we are playing the same here. Apart from structural improvements to help markets withstand cyclones, the project helped draw up plans to assist market vendors and the general public during natural disasters. And Council 2, we have a lot awareness through the market vendors here. We are really aware that all this is one place where we are safe. We have all facilities too where we install them, such as uh, all signages. We give them 
uh, way, route where you have a come out lehem. Sometimes you got all the uh, sirens where you stop. Trainings were held through the Market Vendor Associations to prepare women for impending disasters and to enable the members to alert other vendors when the time came. The trainings resulted in market level disaster preparedness and emergency plans for each market. Then we mivlay sabe se wan disaster is taka o pa mivlay mitim disaster pa mivlay talem vuotia o tok tokia sentencia pa mivlay mas mufa lo piltinya lo mivlay kama. I me send them one woman and me come give him a training lo side lo disaster. So now time we only RM one one here Mister Kam alito seme all vendors one Mister Lo. Working together with market vendor associations and local governments, the project has helped all three project countries move forward on improvements to their markets. These developments are meant to provide a safer, healthier environment for women while enabling them to earn money for their families. Since the Markets for Change project began, a number of notable milestones have been achieved. From the initial six market vendor associations, there are now more than 19 across the three countries. These associations now have 7,500 members. 84% of those members are women. In 13 of these associations, the majority of leadership positions are held by women. Over 2,500 women have been trained on financial literacy and better business practices. Over 1,000 women have been trained on improved agriculture productivity. Eight markets were renovated and retrofitted to Category 5 cyclone resistant. Five markets supported by M4C now have accommodation centers for rural women. Eighteen markets now have disaster preparedness and emergency plans. But one of the most important achievements has been the positive changes in the lives of thousands of Pacific women. Pacific Island markets are more than just places where the public can buy fresh food. They are more than just places where mainly rural women earn much needed money for their families. Through the Markets for Change project, Pacific Island markets have become an opportunity for community-based women to become leaders. Markets are now a place where women's voices are being heard in market management and in local government. Markets are becoming places where security, safety and health issues are not only recognized, they are being acted upon and becoming reality. Through training, women market vendors are learning the skills they need, not just to save money for the first time, but to build financial security for their families, and even setting up new business ventures on their own. The beautiful thing about Markets for Change is that it doesn't only improve the lives of women in the markets, it also has an ongoing ripple effect that touches the lives of their families, their children, their grandchildren, and their communities. And so we're proud of the impact we've had on the lives of women and girls in the Pacific. And in fact, they've, they've taken ownership of their own status. Before, I had too much clothes, I had time money. There were a lot of time when I attended training. I had to come back with a mask and I had to make a business here. And I helped too much. We have grown a bit up with cash, especially financial status has grown up. You know, family status has also grown up. We contribute more to our household, to our community, because we know how to make money and keep money and budgeting. That respect for me as a market vendor and so important that of involving me in the policy making, the Malaita province, because me play a higher role where me no expecting by me play him. Me before you see stuff we can map me, you know, we me empower you to say something we need to say making. That's in feeling for me, me service, me, me say, me to want something.